What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you this week's mishmash of reviews and updates and things that I watched for this week. So I'm going to start it off with a couple of trailer updates of content that I found interesting. Um, this week's video game review, which I'll also provide a little bit of update on the last video game review. And then I'm going to round it out with my review of, or from my rewatch of Game of Thrones. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. So this week from San Diego Comic Con, there were a couple of bits of information that I found interesting. Not to say that it's everything that's good that came out of it, but these are the ones that stood out. So first off, it looks like we're getting a new comic book run called Batman Gargoyle of Gotham. So it explores the story of what if Batman shed the Bruce Wayne persona and went full Batman, didn't switch back to Bruce Wayne, uh, got rid of that personality and all of that. So that looks like it's something that is coming in 2024, I believe it was. So look out for that. I just thought that it was interesting. The animation style was really good. Um, there was a video trailer for it, so I thought that was kind of weird. So I first I thought maybe it's going to be a limited run uh, TV show or something like that. So maybe there is or they're going to have something along those lines instead of a comic book run or something. So look out for that if you're a Batman fan. And then as a follow up to last week's review for The Walking Dead Dead City, we got a trailer and update that it will be returning for a season two. So we're going to get the continuing adventures of um, Negan with that new community, um, potentially um, a team up again with uh, Maggie. Maybe Maggie goes back to save Negan, bring him back from that community. So um, basically a follow up to season one. So um, really pleased and glad to hear that. And um, the show notes will have a link to the trailer for that. Nothing much special there more kind of like a recap of season one and um they've been greenlit for a season two so that's all there is for that um so as far as a video game review update um so far or as of earlier this week there still wasn't an update as far as a fix for knights of the old republic for android it was still randomly crashing for me so i got to thinking what video game i could play I was originally going to play Voxel Doom, which uh, turns all the models in Doom into more 3D sprites, better animations, and things like that. But then I remembered there was a mod called Brutal Doom, which takes the Doom platform and makes it more modern to the point of what if you could rotate your gun um, in a more circular fashion, fashion? So rather than just along the um, X axis, you could also move on, on the Y axis and whatever the diagonal axis is called. I think it's the Z axis. So basically you can move a uh, free form, move your weapons around. Um, it also adds more gore and special visual effects. So it makes it more of a 3D platform. So when you explode or when you shoot at barrels and they explode, it has more animations and sprites there's more gore on the um demons of hell when you kill them so essentially it makes it a more realized version of doom than what was originally released and it's nothing bad against the original platform it was released with the hardware capabilities of the time but what if they made doom you know 10 years later or five years later and they had these options so you could make it a more realized game so you do have faster moving sp um, sprites and things like that and so far as far as what i've gone through the game you have a few more character models so there is you know scientists with axes so think of it like um half-life characters kind of but um it makes the environment a little bit more presentable and then the demons move towards you they have better firing weapons so it makes it a little bit more harder even on the easier levels because the uh, weapons animations are that much uh, faster and smoother and reactive and things like that. Um, I don't see that there's too much as far as graphical updates, but the models do have that voxelized effect. So when you, they uh, rotate and move around, you do get a more 3D effect. So 
Um, as far as I've, as I've gotten so far, it is really good and really interesting, makes me want to keep playing it. So that's the current gameplay that I am going through to the point where I am actually curious to see how the first uh, mission ends and we get the Barons of Hell. I, and I am really super curious to see how um, that plays out and then ha um, what happens with the rest of the game with um, enemies like the Cyber Demon and... Um, the Spider Mastermind. Um, as far as the platform I'm playing it on, it is still on Android. Um, I'm using a version of GZ Doom that's part of an Android app called Delta Touch. So if you want to play the game yourself, then um, that's kind of how you will play the game on Android aside from the official Doom ports released by Bethesda. So if you want to play different mods that you can't play through the official Doom app for Android, um, you would go to the Google Play Store, install Delta Touch. There is a free version, which I'm not sure what the limitations are there, but I did um, buy the license for it. So um, it unlocks all the features. I don't have to worry about what works and what doesn't work, but you install Delta Touch. You can pick from one of the different um, uh, available engines. So there's GZ Doom. Z Doom, which is an open source or a more open source version of GZ Doom, and then there's a few other ones like Vanilla Doom, Chocolate Doom, and things like that. So if, if one doesn't work, you can always try another. Then you have to download the Doom mod, so you can get the shareware version off of places like archive.org. But if you have, for example, the Steam version of Doom, like which is um, the Ultimate Doom that I'm using to play Brutal Doom on now. You can download the uh, game from Steam and copy the WAD over to your local device um, and then download the WAD that you want to play. So in this case, Sprudel Doom, or if you want to use Voxel Doom, you can do that. Or basically just any, as far as I can tell, any mod that used to work on Doom should work in this case because you're loading the Doom WAD and then you're do, um, also loading the um, add-on mod that you want to play. And um, Delta Touch via GZ Doom should just work. Um, I am using GZ Doom because it seems like it's the most compatible of the mods. And there's no other interactions with the stuff that other mods do. So the chocolate and vanilla ports um, didn't seem to do anything with the Brutal Doom mod. Z Doom seemed to work. Um, it has a few extra options, which I was originally going to do, but then. I think I did a reset by accident and I couldn't find some of the extra texture mods and um, lighting and various other updates again. So I was like, just forget it. I'll just play the GZ Doom version and take it from there. So that's what I'm doing now. But there's a lot of options to play around with. So if you're if you want to play the game on the go, then it's definitely worth checking out. Um, much like most gameplay for me, playing with the Razer Kishi is the best way to go um, just because it's um, it's easy to play with a controller rather than on-screen on screen controls, but you do have that option to play with on-screen controls. Like, there are customization options to, to, for where to put the joysticks and buttons and um, various other on-screen elements, so you can customize that to your needs and then play the game from there. So um, that's all there is for that. So if you follow along on the YouTube channel at PatelN01, uh, I'm so far, um, lately I've just been doing one level a day, but as time permits, I'm thinking of probably doing um, a couple extra levels um, if, like I said, time permitting, but I've just been doing um, single level gameplay so that I can explore the game a little bit more uh, patiently, get around to various enemies, find various secrets if I can, and things like that. So um, that's kind of the um, aim there, but the videos are up on the YouTube channel as they're ready. So. Um, you can play along with that. And then I do have the playlist going. So if you want to bookmark that, um, then you can check up, check the videos there. And I'll have a link in the show notes as well. So each week as I continue to play the game, I'll have a link in the show notes to that you to the playlist so you can catch up that way as well. But of course, as most things, ideally, I would like if you subscribe to the channel so you get regular updates there as well. So with that being said, um, as I mentioned at the top of the show, I had a chance to finally finish um, finish playing, or not playing, but finish watching Game of Thrones. So I started quite literally at season one, episode one, worked my way through the entire season, or the entire show. And overall, I want to say that the show holds up as far as overall storylines are, character progressions, acting, scenery... Um, everything um, holds up as being a really good show, so the popularity was really good. 
Um, so the first thing I want to get out of the way is the ending. So for the most part, while season seven and eight were probably the speediest of the episodes or the speediest of the seasons, I actually found that I did not mind a lot of what they presented in there, but it feels like that they could have gone a lot further, a lot, done a lot more even without the source material or at least presented source material or presented material for to be filled in further at a later date. So one of the things that struck out to me was the that while the Night King's death at Ar with Ar at Arya's hands was a very good scene well portrayed and all of that the battle for Winterfell was very well done the there could have been a lot more build up as far as the interactions between the Night King and Bran um having the Night King's um mark on Bran was fine but it feels like they could have expanded on that a lot more so uh we know about the creation of the Night King but why does he want to if the Night King wants to kill everybody then why does he need to kill Bran if everyone's dead then he shouldn't have to go after Bran just kill everybody and he doesn't have to worry about the history of Westeros the history of the world or anything like that so that's why that part was kind of weird to the point where I got to thinking that it feels like there was missing information in that whole um, time frame where they kind of explored things like um, if um, basically at the Battle of Hardhome they know that they get their first taste of um, dragon glass killing White Walker same thing with um, Sam killing the White Walker early on in the first few seasons but if the Night King was as big of a threat as they imagined shouldn't he have been smart enough to figure out that in all this time that they had time to prepare it's possible that they figured out um, that dragon glass can kill White Walkers and so um, either he doesn't know that they know that or um, there's some other importance to Bran, or he wants the knowledge of Bran to look forward and backwards through time, have the full history of Westeros, be able to look into, through um, Bran's eyes, and which reminded me of the whole thing from The Matrix that the reason why Agent Smith was a better villain in this kind of case is because he was going after the Oracle, he wants her eyes, he wants to be able to see everything and be able to have all that information handy to get more power. So. The Night King kind of falls into that whole thing of just being another character that, or just another, basically just another boss fight that needs to, where he needs to be killed. Sure, he's a little bit harder to kill than you know a dragon or um, a bad guy that like Joffrey or another one of the kings of Westeros. So um, he should have, to me, he should have given been given that personality that he wants to go after Bran to have his eyes in be able to be the three-eyed raven to um, explore the worlds, go further and further into the worlds and take it over into the long night. Um, even give him a, to the point where give him a voice and um, be able to talk to Bran that the children of the forest converted me to kill, go after the realms of men. They couldn't do it. So he's the, you know, he's the only one like make him a nice watch guy or give him a conversation. Yeah, it would be kind of tropey to have him have that big speech while talking to Bran, but give more perspective to the Three-Eyed Raven as the one who can stop him and give him more of a personality besides just a quiet person who doesn't talk because he realizes, for example, that none of these lords of, West of Westeros are able to kill him, give him that ego, and the only person he really cares about is Bran. So, you know, a few extra episodes or, you know, an extra episode to delve into that character um give more conversation between him and bran and interactions and all of that to expand on that story would have made that that much stronger um and then as far as the ending goes i actually still don't mind it to the point where it worked out the way it should um john realizes that daenerys is going to take over the world he loves her he's a targaryen he doesn't want it um so he kills the queen um and the best compromise for that was to send him back to the Night's nice Watch, even though that was not a punishment, um, and keep everything else as is. Um, except for one point, which I'll get to. So the thing that bothered me as well in the final couple of episodes or final episode was calling B Bran, Bran the Broken. It feels like that's kind of a messed up thing to call him. 
because it undermines what he is, what he's able to do, and his visions and all that. So I really thought they should have gone with something like call him um, Brand the Builder, Brand the Wise, or even just can't, let's keep it simple and call him Brand the Three Eyed Raven. Um, to the point where instead of making him the king, make John the king um, and have the whole arc with everybody and the Unsullied with Grey Worm to make Grey Worm realize that the queen that they swore to follow is not that same queen anymore. She's going to go after everybody, kill everyone. If everyone's the queen's enemies, then who are they going to, who's going to be left over to rule? So, um spend the time to expand on things like that so while the content that's there was fine they could have they should not have shortened it and they should have expanded on things like that so make john the king because and expand on the whole thing that because he doesn't want it is why he would be a good king bring the night's watch back into the fold um as not necessarily a king's guard but as that punishment but you know rebuild use that to rebuild the order or make the unsullied the night's watch um, because of their abilities to protect the kingdom and make them the protectors of the kingdom kind of thing, you know? But also to that point, it was a pretty jerk move for Sansa to take the North. The whole thing with Bran, you're my brother, I love you, but the, South, the North will not bend the knee again. Overlooks the whole thing that she was trying to say that Bran's from the North, he's a Stark. The North will follow um, him as their king. So to make him the king of Westeros, the North would follow him because of all the criteria that she's trying to claim that the North needs to follow. So the Winterfell and North, the North could have been kept in the fold. Um, it's okay to make, or it would have been for good to make Sansa the wardeness of the North, but keep the North in the kingdom. They're going to follow Bran because he's a Stark. He has his wisdom. He's He knows them just as well as anybody else. So even with John being king of the nor the North, the North could have followed him. Sansa would have remained wardeness of the North, and Bran's role would have been, you know, Grand Maester, Grand Historian, anything you want to oversee the Citadel and all of that. So he he's all part of that. Ma even make Sam, you know, hand of the king because of his friendship with John. As far as Tyrion's punishment goes, um. That's fine. The alternative would have been to make him um, leader of the Night's Watch or leader of the military, Master of Coin, anything like that. Give him that role, but still make him fall under Bran to, uh, or fall under, you know, John and uh, Grey Worm or anybody. Have him report to everyone for all that matters, you know, just to make him pay for his crimes. But his mind would have been one of those things to keep in play in the kingdoms, but. As um, um, Sansa said, he was the best of the Lannisters, so give him the chance at for the redemption. So, um, with that being said, overall, I thought um, this time around his character arc was probably the best from you know season one all the way to the end. Um, I did, still didn't like the redemption arc for Jamie, how that ended, just because it looked like he was doing a really good job as far as the redemption going to Winterfell um, joining up helping them going against his sister and then he goes back to Cersei so it didn't it feels like she he could have um gone back to her to try and redeem her again take like even lie about it and say that yeah we're gonna escape we're gonna go on this boat and take him or take her to Winterfell or take her to Daenerys to answer for her crimes or something along those lines but and I thought that was the, um, I, I just didn't like that this time around. I don't remember how I felt before, but I thought uh, it thought it could have been better handled. Um, as far as best events in the series, um, Tyrion's trial by far is the best arc, um, just because of the whole thing about from you know Joffrey's wedding all the way up until the Mountain kills Oberyn. So just everything in between, and then killing Tywin, the fallout, Tyrion's speech. Um, and all of that, just that, I want to say, is the gold standard for um, acting and performance and stories in the show. Um, I did like the Battle of the Bastards and Jon's revival and ending that with Jon saying, and now my watch has ended. So um, that resolves all of that story arc and finally gives Sansa the, uh, the ability to grow outside of 
all the stories and events that led them to that point. Um, otherwise, I did like, you know, Lady Olena's confession to Jamie about killing Joffrey. So, um, the between the music, the following Jamie through the castle, and then getting to Lady, Lady Olena, their discussion and all of that. Um, and then from here, there wasn't... I was trying to think of a couple more that stood out. Um, so things like the Night King converting Viserion to a white dragon was really good. So I just like that ending with uh, touching the dragon and the eye opening to blue and then tearing down the wall and all of that. And then to round it out, I thought Viserys is wanting his promise crown from Khal Drogo or Khal Drogo um, stands out just because um, early on that, or basically because that starts Daenerys' uh, visual transformation to being a Khaleesi, uh, stepping out from under her brother's shadow, not being a follower or anything like that, and just uh, working her way um, up and becoming um, the Khaleesi that she was meant to be. So all of that was, that part of it was a, basically a good launching point for her. So. That covers just about everybody. Um, Arya's story was good. I like how she her story arc ended for um, the faceless man and taking out the House of Frey to, or the um, F Lord Frey to um, say winter is coming for or winter came for House Frey, but also round out the uh, vengeance story arc for the Red Wedding. So that was a call good callback there, um, and. So between that and Daenerys telling Jorah to find the cure for Grayscale and Sam curing it were good runners up as well. So that was a good connection as well for um, Sam and Jorah as far as um, the connection to Lord Commander Mormont. Um, the connection later where Danny admits to Sam that um, she killed his br um, father and brother. Uh, John not knowing about it and all of that. So the story, so the show actually was really good about connecting all the story points, uh, remembering stuff that happened to, um, you know, like whether it was two episodes or two seasons ago, the show kept really good track of all of those interactions and things like that. So um, definitely a show worth the rewatch. So for me, while I don't agree with the whole show being too fast at the end because of the whole travel business, um, I think they could have filled in the show with more episodes and more content. Um, whether it was ready or not with um, George R. R. Martin, it feels like they could have done the reverse thing where because they didn't have the, any source material to base the show off of, they could have worked with him to expand on what the show was showing. And then by the time George gets to that point in the books, um, write it out and explain it, expand on it to give more context. But don't cut content from the show. Don't make it longer or don't make it shorter. Don't, you know, make episodes longer to, you know, finish the story faster. So I think things like that kind of made it fall apart. Originally, I was going to say that the show kind of started going downhill from, well, actually, it still holds um, that the show kind of went downhill from the last, um, the last of the stars, the Battle of Winterfell, basically from that episode on is kind of where it went downhill because um, essentially you don't have content and they're just rushing to finish it. Um, season seven was okay. If they had kind of rearranged it, they could have had a couple more episodes in there to keep it even, but just things like that. If they had kept the content level going to explain things like that and give you know, for me, the Night King more content, so he's just not just a random boss fight to finish. It would have made the show that one much better, and it kind of would have abated the whole thing that they're trying to rush the ending and finish it off. So that's all there is for this particular episode. So if you have any questions, comment, feedback, um, or anything like that, and what do you think of my analysis of Game of Thrones? Do you think I'm totally wrong? Uh, what did you like, dislike? Um, about the show how do you think it ended you can give your feedback to or um, apply to the post on social media by visiting the site at headphonesneal.reviews where all the social media links are there um, i do need to update the site with a link to my threads account i'm gonna give it another shot or a little bit longer they did uh, push out an update recently where you can switch between all followers or recommended followers and just whoever you're following so i'm gonna give it another shot 
Um, but the, the social media links that I'm currently on are on the website, as well as, as well links to the YouTube channel, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And as always, you, as a patron, you get early access to the show, as well as an ad-free version of the show, which can be found at patreon.com slash patelan01. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.